Hey, what's happening everyone? My name is Ryan and today I wanted to show you how you can get these three different looks using the same light. Let's get into it. So today I'm gonna to break down three different cinematic style scenes that you can use for your films. The one light that I'm using is the Ambitful A2. I'm not gonna go into huge detail about this light because I've honestly talked about it a lot in a lot of my other videos. I promise I'm not sponsored by these guys. I just really love this light and for the price at $50, uh, you could really do a lot, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Right now, I'm actually in Southern California where I actually used to live and I'm staying in this really nice house, splitting it with some family and it just has this really old architecture kind of look, really old school style. So I thought I would create a couple scenes in some of the rooms here and even outside in the yard and break those down for you here. I decided to pack really light for this trip because I didn't want to bring a full bunch of gear with me all the way to California. So in true fashion, I'm going to create all of these scenes just using what I have available to me. All right, so let's get into our first scene and that is the vintage bathroom scene, or at least that's what I'm calling it. This bathroom is one of the first rooms that really caught my eye, all the tile and the super old sink. But the thing that really caught my attention the most was this window, this stained glass window. It was just emitting this really warm hue in the bathroom and I thought this could be a really cool vintage style bathroom scene. I don't know. The first thing I did was turn off the bathroom lights because they had this hospital fluorescent vibe and I wasn't really digging that so I turned those off then I set up my light. One of the reasons that I really love using this little tube light is that it's magnetic so I can slap it onto any metallic surface which is what I did here. I stuck it right to one of these lighting fixtures that we turned off because it had a metal base and I faced it towards the window. Now this light was spilling all over the room and onto my subject which was my wife she helped me out with this particular scene so I decided to add a bit of negative fill onto the right side of her face I didn't bring any negative fill with me so all I did was take one of my black t-shirts and literally stuck it on this picture frame that was to her right and that seemed to do the job to control the lighting a little bit more I just added a bit of gaff tape on one side of the tube light and that seemed to do the trick all of this just added shadows and layers of things creating a little bit more depth for the scene. One more thing here is my color temperature. So when I had the window open, the color temperature was daylight, which is 5600 Kelvin. And when I closed the window, it gave for more of a warmer temperature. So I decided to set my light to match that color temperature about 2800 Kelvin. Now, if you don't have a bicolor light like this tube light, then all you really need to do is use a CTO gel, which is a color temperature orange gel and stick that in front of your light. These are really affordable, but if you don't have access to gels, you could just reflect your light off of a warmer surface, like a warm tone curtain or bed sheet or something like that. After this, I just sprayed a little aerosol haze. If you've seen some of my other videos, I use my haze machine a lot, but again, on this trip, I decided to pack light. If you don't have access to a haze machine, this will work really great. So here's our final look for this scene, starting with just the window light, then our tube light, our negative fill, and then the final look. All in all, I think this scene came out pretty great. Let's move on to our next scene, and that is the street light scene. This house had so many old features, and one of the details that I saw right away were these street lamps. Now, they're not really street lamps because they're not in the street. They're in the front yard of this house, but that's what we're going to go with today. I saw this light and loved it, so I thought I would use it to motivate our lighting for this particular scene. This one's real simple. All I did was set my camera up, frame the shot, and then we set our tube light off to the side of our subject and at a good distance to try and soften the light just a little bit. Now, if you don't have a C-stand, no worries at all. You could use whatever lighting stand you have, or you could ask a friend to hold the light and that would work just as well. There's no real reason why I used a C-stand other than the fact that that was the only lighting stand that I brought with me on this trip. Okay, so after this, I set my tube light to match the color temperature of the street light. I just got the shot and then something unexpected happened. Some fog rolled in right as I was finished getting the shot. And this was looking really cool around this street lamp. It gave us a bit of natural haze that really rounded out the look and gave us more depth in the shot. So I just set everything back up, got the shot with this addition of the fog rolling in. And here is the final look, starting with just our street light and then our added tube light as our motivated lighting. This scene was one of the easiest ones to capture. However, the only bummer that I had was that I was trying to get this shot during blue hour. And if the fog would have rolled in during blue hour, that would have been just perfect for me. I, I really like that moody style look that you can get with blue hour. However, we can't control the weather. Only God can do that. <laughs> All right, so moving on to our third scene, and that is our mystery room scene. I just call it the mystery room scene just because it reminded me of, you know, your classic murder mystery style movie. 
Ah, it's not perfect, but that's what we're going with today. First, I just turned off the room lights, but I did turn on this table lamp just to use as a practical light in the background of the scene. It also lit up the background a little bit, separating me from the background and giving me a bit of rim light there. It just really helps to add some more depth to the scene because it was so dark. This tube light is an RGB light as well, so I was able to set it to this light blue color to try and emulate our moonlight. I just set this on this little wooden gate that was right in front of the window and faced it off to the side so it wasn't so harsh on my face and turned it down to about 10%. Then I just shut the window pane because I liked the shadows that it was giving off as the light was shining through this window frame. Next, I just added a bit of this spray haze in the room and here is the final look starting with just our table lamp, then our moonlight, and of course, our haze. All in all, I think these scenes really came out great and if anything, it just goes to show you that location and set design really add so much to the story that you're trying to create. But as always on this channel, it also goes to show you that you don't need a whole lot to create something that looks great. Now, obviously I could have done so many other things with these scenes, adding a lot more lights and really making it look awesome and just movie-like. However, I love being able to go into a room, use as little gear as possible and really challenge myself to make something that looks cinematic, that looks like a movie. So as always, I just want to encourage you to use what you have and just go out and make your film. Well, that's going to do it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this lighting tutorial. If you like this video or you learned something, please click the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.